need the Lord to help you the whole out. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, Jesus. Oh,
tell you, Lord, to say thank you, Lord. And we ask you right now, dear Lord, to bless these gifts for you that we have received, Lord, let them be used for the building of your kingdom, Lord. Bless the ones who gave them, bless the ones in their hearts that wanted to give but couldn't give to them, Lord. And we came here to give you all your honor and praise. In your daughter, son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand praise for you. Amen. Amen. And if you 
have it, and when you have it, say it, man. If you don't say not yet. In chapter 2 of Mark, verses 1 through 5. A very familiar passage of scripture. And it reads as follows. I'm reading out of the NIV version. It says, a few days later when Jesus had entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing them a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof uh, of, of Jesus, above Jesus by digging through it, and lowered the mat the man was laying on. And verse five says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Beloved, I want you to take a moment and point to yourself, I mean, to the Jesus deep inside of you and say, you ain't never had a friend like this. Yeah. You may be seated in the presence of God. Beloved, I would be remiss if I didn't take time to acknowledge this good man to the right of me. He has been my mentor, my father figure. He's attempted to lay hands on me from time to time. <laughs> But he keeps me, and also to give honor to his darling wife, the first lady who's like a mother to me, and my own dear wife, amen, and all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It is a wonderful opportunity to be here one more time, amen. Amen, amen, amen. The church, good friends are hard to come by. I say good friends are hard to maintain. Yes, sir, yes, sir. As we look over our lives, we have come to find that good friends are far few and in between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they are here today and they are gone tomorrow. Yes, and that is because good friends are hard to find. Amen. Beloved, I don't want to uh, paint a depressing picture when it comes to friends. Because there are some folks in this world that are worthy are holding the title of a good friend. There are some folks in the world that have been around you long enough that they have earned your relationship. Uh, they are there when you need a shoulder to cry on. They are there when you need a friend, friend to do you a favor and they're not expecting nothing in return. Uh, they are there when you have something to say that you just can't say to no one else. These people have earned the title of a good friend. The church, you do not know the ones that I'm talking about, don't you? The ones that we give nicknames or terms of enduring. Uh, back in the day, we used to call them my main man. Uh, sometimes we might call them my ace bone cone. Uh, sometimes you might hear one sister say to another sister, that's my girlfriend. And sometimes when they have an intimate relationship with one another, they may call her my boo. I tell you that good friends are hard to find, but some have developed the right relationship with you. Sometimes we have to take into consideration that there are only a few faithful friends that you get to know and that they get to know you by your name. Right. I'm reminded this morning of an old sitcom that used to come on late at night. It's called Cheers. And they had a jingle that went with this talk show. And I'm going to say it, it goes like this. Making your way through the world takes everything you got. Uh, taking a moment and break from your worry surely can help a lot. All those points that you have, no lights. You, but the check is in the mail. And the angel talking about your child has hung the cat up by his tail. I tell you that you need to be around people that know your name. 
Yeah. Beloved, I stopped by to ask a simple question this morning. Can I reason with you but for a moment? Are you glad that you came into the house of God this morning and you stepped in and said, for your, your name? Are you glad this morning that you stepped into the house of God or into the place of worship and someone greeted you by your name? When you look over your life and you take on problem after problem, when you look over your life and you find that you've taken on trouble after trouble, when you look back over your life and find that you couldn't work from could to couldn't, aren't you glad that you have, were able to tell somebody, hush, because I hear somebody calling my name. Sometimes you got to take it to the Consideration that if it were not for the love of Christ, if he had not brought you from where you can to where you can, if he didn't take the time to call you by name, you would still be where you were 10 years ago. You would still be in the same circumstances that deprived you of life. You ought to be grateful today that God called you a friend and he took the time to call your name. Beloved, as we get into the lesson, this morning and we study about the text we here find that there's a, a man with a health condition That's right. according to our text he had been dealing with this sickness all of his life mm -hmm. he had been bed bedridden with uh, no help to get him through this life except for the exception of a faithful few friends right. sometimes just a faithful few friends that have your back and your front is all you need in this life. A few faithful friends that have covered you on your left and your right is all you need in this life. A few faithful friends that are looking out for you on your north, your south, your east, and your west is all you need in this good life. Because I tell you that a good friend is hard to find. Beloved, if I can get a little personal this morning, I find that it is better to have a faithful few friends than a faithful few fakers. There's some people that stepped into your life that are coming to see what they can see, hear what they can hear, and do what they can do to tear you down from where God is trying to move. But God has a greater plan for your life. Because the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. That means that he's brought you through some things to serve him in his own time. Beloved, I tell you this morning that you have to be careful about whom you interact with. Sometimes you may not have been involved in the situation, but I heard old saying said you're guilty by association. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Being guilty by association can work two ways. Church, it was not the faith of the paralytic men that caused him to get to Jesus. It was the faith of his faithful few friends. It was not the perseverance of the paralytic man that led him to healing, but it was the faith of a faithful few friends. Am I helping somebody this morning to tell you that sometimes it's who you are attached to and who is attached to you that establish you with a right relationship with God? You have to be careful who you let. Coming to your service. Beloved, sometimes it's not a matter of what is wrong with you, but it is more so a matter of who is wrong for you. Can I say it one more time? Sometimes it's not about the conditions that you may have, but it's about those who are around you who while you are dealing with the conditions that you're dealing with. Some people take more time to pour out to tear out of you than they do to pour into you. You have to be careful who you are interacting with. Beloved, let me put it to you in another way. Sometimes some people are just not of the same species of you as you. If your parents raised you in the fear of the Lord and the respect of yourself and in your circle of few faithful fakers, if they are comfortable calling you the word snitch but put a B on the front of it, you ain't of the same species as them. If you know that you have been changed and you are walking in the fear and admiration of the, the Lord and you find that your few faithful fakers are taking the time to call you a figure but put an N in the front of it, they're not of the same species as them. Beloved, when we think about the problems that we have suffered through, 
and you consider the fact that you could have uh, worked from that anyone who was in your life that had worked from good to couldn't and couldn't take time to help you get to Jesus, they are not the same species as you. Yeah. Beloved, you know I'm not a long-winded person and I won't be before you but for a few more moments, but I just wanted to ask, have we taken into consideration the few faithful friends that are willing to stick right. around during our trials and tribulations? Right. Beloved, you had trouble in your way. That means that you had to cry sometimes. Mm -hmm. But somebody told you about the goodness of the Lord and whatever your whatever was, didn't he work it out? Yeah. You ought to look to your neighbor to the left or right and tell your neighbor, I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. Yeah. Is there anybody here this morning that knows that we have a friend that sticks closer than a brother and his name is Jesus. Can I make it plain to you this morning as I close? There's a reason why we worship him. It's because of who he is that we give him glory. It's because of who he is that we give him praise. It's because of who he is that we can realize that can't nobody do me like Jesus. It's because of who he is that trouble don't last so is that we got the victory. It's because of who we who he is that we can hold up the bloodstained banner. It's because of who he is that we know that we've been changed. It's because of who he is that we can say, I ain't never had a friend like this. Give God some breaks. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise. That was good, y'all. I, I, I think he owed us some change. We're too short. That was good, but we thank God for him. And uh, the doors of the church is open. And, and uh, if anyone need to know the Lord, this is the place. Everybody stand. Maybe somebody wants to slip on. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Is there anyone? Come by left. Christian experience. Candidate for baptism. If you die today, what would you spend eternity? Give the Lord a hand, praise to this preacher. Amen. We thank God for him. Amen. We're going to ask the mother and the baby and the godparents and the grandmother to come forward. Then 
were there brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples, they rebuked him. But Jesus said, suffer the little children and forbid them not to come unto me. For such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and he departed. Uh, can I have a assistant over here somewhere? One of the dignitaries here. Y'all open up the red seat. <laughs> okay, okay, get back in. Right. He's not trying to bop with y'all. He's trying to get through. Oh, <laughs> right now, we are going to dedicate this baby Hey. 
Amen. Come on, give the Lord another hand. We are want to get ready to go now from this place and again we thank Reverend uh, Lewis for that word. Come on.